this week we got a chance to sit down with Sue Stinson, who is one of our favorite clients. Actually, they're all our favorite clients, but uh, um, <laughs> I really do like working with Sue. She's, she's a lot of fun to work with, and she's got a great personality, and she's so much fun to, to get on the phone with, and you'll see that in just a few minutes. But um, by way of introduction, uh, Sue Stinson is the Director of Business Development for Motive Learning. Um, and as a director of business development, Sue is focused on increasing your organization's productivity and efficiency through the use of Motive Learning's dynamic talent development tracking and reporting system, the Motive LMS, um, along with their mo mobile responsive 24 by 7 uh, online training programs. By collaborating with workforce development and training managers in the aerospace, aviation, and manufacturing sectors, Motive Learning can also design and deliver custom course solutions quickly to meet the challenges of administering and tracking critical just-in-time training required by industry qualification and government standards. Prior to arriving in Florida, um, where she just began working with Motive Learning, Sue worked for 14 years with the Commonwealth of Virginia's largest state university, George Mason University. Uh, where she focused on promoting and providing customized professional development programs through the Executive and continued, Continuing Professional Education Unit um, to meet organizational point, pain points and challenges. Those training programs were conducted cost-effectively in a confidential setting, in person, and online. Uh, she brings over 20 years of experience in education, both as a teacher and administrator, with a master's in organization development and knowledge management from George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. So since 2006, corporate and government clients of all sizes have received outstanding customer service throughout the execution of their contracted training event. Uh, Sue's customers were assured of receiving quality just-in-time training, which directly impacted their bottom line, meets compliance requirements, and powers performance. So. Um, all that said, uh, we're going to talk to Sue about uh, aviation marketing, of course, working with motive learning and uh, some of the things that training and marketing have in common and how that works together in a lot of cases. So um, let's turn it right over. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, um, Susan, it's really good to, to sit down with you. I know we've been working together for a little bit and uh, it's good to actually have a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. Definitely. Thank you for the opportunity. This is a real treat, real treat. Thank you. All right. So um, tell us a little bit more about Motive LMS and how you ended up there. Uh, yeah, it's like, how do you get a girl from Wisconsin in Florida? Mm, yeah. <laughs> but uh, long, long story there. But no, for, for today's purposes, um, it, it is uh, with a 20 year background in education and especially higher ed and, and custom professional development, um, mm. spent that in, in, uh, in, in Northern Virginia, uh, outside of Washington, DC. And then uh, a major life change occurred and I used to be married. Uh, my fiance lives in Melbourne, Florida. Mm. And, um, it was a matter of who could get a job in which place first, and that's where we would settle. And it turns out that I was able to find a position before he could find one in Northern Virginia. So uh, moved moved down to Melbourne over the summer, right in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> wow, so it was a, a career so race. <laughs> it was a career race and a COVID-19 uh, race, yes. But uh, no, um, I've been always involved in higher ed. I'm a lifelong learner. Um, and, and, the, and the pleasure that I get out of combining our resources with, with the customer's needs has always been what has driven me in, in various sales positions throughout my life. But um, raising children and being a volunteer teacher, as well as then going to school myself for organization development and knowledge management to help adult learners. So that's here I am. Wow. So you're probably one of those people that really enjoys watching the lights come on uh, when people learn something new. Most definitely, the light bulb moments, um, mm -hmm. and and I have them. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, when when you when you, I, I've always wanted to teach what I learned, whether it was guitar or or skiing or whatever. Um, it's just something that is difficult for me to contain, and it just seemed a natural a natural combination. So interesting, yeah. That's there are people who are born teachers, and it sounds like you're you're really one of those. 
I, I would, I would, I would follow, I would fall in that category. Yes. Uh, and yet in, in this COVID time, not every teacher was equipped or prepared uh, to go from uh, live face-to-face classes to online classes. But right. um, thank goodness, uh, mode of learning has always been online and always had the customer's needs served with online uh, delivery. Uh, so there was never a hiccup, never, never a gap in the need and the delivery ability. Right. So in the right place at the right time. That's Absolutely. Very smart. <laughs> All right. So could you give us a couple of examples of projects that you've worked on or people that you've you've helped? Sure. Um, well, uh, having come from Northern Virginia and, and serving in the greater D.C. area at George Mason University, um, we had many government clients and many mm-hmm. large government contractors as clients. And I think one of the most uh, unusual, which probably won't happen here in Florida. <laughs> uh, we were faced with a snowstorm around mm-hmm. St. Patrick's Day. Uh, a large government agency had 110 people for training, and they asked um, they asked us to prepare the materials because the customer could or we could. And and then it turned out that the snowstorm would closed the campus and close oh, no. the government. And, and, and there was no facility on either place to produce the materials. So um, using some creativity, I went to my neighborhood, <laughs> Kinko's, and produced it overnight, uh, through the night, and, and had, um, had brought down the materials and, and, and the slides and all myself to, to the hotel nearby where the camp, where the training was going to be held in a, in a ballroom of a JW Marriott actually. And uh, we were able to have the class because uh, the next day everything was clear and fine, but there would have been no way to produce the materials if we hadn't done it uh, in the middle of the night, basically the night before. Oh my goodness. So um, it just, the, the 110 people needed the training. It was compliance training. They had to have it or they couldn't continue in their role. And um, as you know, the government, the mail stopped, but our training did not. <laughs> we were able to oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Neither snow nor sleet That's nor right. hail. <laughs> right, right, indeed. So that gives you a sense of my commitment to, to the customer, and the customer could not have rescheduled it otherwise because people came from all over the country to do it. And um, strangely, uh, that happened twice. Another customer had a snowstorm that almost derailed uh, our training. But again, um, because of the of the uh, conditions, I was able to get permission from the head of risk management at the university to have the class for these people who flew in from all over and they were all staying at the same hotel. So mm. we, we did it. We did it at, at the hotel instead of having them traipse onto campus. Oh, and, smart. Yeah. And, and well, we'd be flexible and adaptable and, and rather than people risk life and limb to drive to a campus that was not going to be open, <laughs> we, um, we improvise and we held the class right there at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> wow. Thank goodness for holiday inns and, and 24 hour kinkos, right? <laughs> Indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs> to be sure. But, um, you know, from the, from the, the mode of learning aspect, um, we have a, a very good client who has international needs, international. And that's the beauty of the e-learning uh, platform the, the LMS handles the online learning, tracking the, the, the CBT, the, the instructor led and, and, all over the country, no matter what the time for zone, uh, so that the students, the professionals can do it on their laptop, they can do it on their phone, and, and all of their needs are met regardless of the time zone we're on in Florida versus them in Amsterdam or Bahamas or, or um, Scotland. So um, that's, that's a real advantage, real advantage of the e-learning. No that's snow to worry about. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the thing. Is, well, you never know. This is 2020. We better knock on wood. <laughs> Global warming. I don't know about that. Yeah, that's right. But but all in all, to, you know, regardless of, of what the customer, where they're located, they're always going to be able to host and to uh, uh, deliver and to track the training that their employees complete. And, and that is so important. In, in a quick turnaround when folks are saying, how many have I got to be at this airport? How many can be servicing this plane? Uh, the LMS will tell you in a jiffy and, and, and no travel is necessary. Right, right. You know, an interesting thing that I, I learned yesterday, um, you know, mm-hmm. during some of our um, discussions and things like that was that the Motive LMS actually is pretty flexible and it um, also deals with the instructor-led training where they the instructor has a checklist and can check Mm -hmm. people off Mm -hmm. um, even with the on the job training just have them perform a procedure correctly you check it off 
it's in the system, they're good, you know. Exactly. It eliminates, uh, it's you know, environmentally friendly. There's no paper trail. And even if there was a paper checklist, for example, the system allows you to download that so it becomes captured in an electronic form. And there'll be no chasing around in a file cabinet or a folder, you know, did this happen? How, how, how long ago, et cetera. Uh, the LMS is extremely flexible because as our customers have told us, they have different methods of training their folks. Right. And, and we've adapted the LMS to be able to meet their systems needs and meet their processes as opposed to dictating what their processes should be. We adapt to theirs. That's very smart. Mm-hmm. You know, um, just to tie this back to, to marketing and I know mm-hmm. I'm throwing you a curve here because we haven't talked about this, <laughs> but um, you know, a lot of FBOs and other aviation organizations are um, looking for a way to have a competitive advantage and having consistently trained customer service procedures and having a consistent experience is such a cool thing Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of marketing. You know, that's part of branding is having your people do things the same way every time. Yes. uh, I think that's... And and it's as as much as I would like to brag, it's not... It's, it is rocket science. <laughs> in many cases, some of our some of our clients have a lot to do with the rocket launches that shake my house every once in a while. Um, and it's life or death when you are at flying commercially or privately. Um, if if the if the plane has not been serviced correctly, uh, it's life or death. And yeah. um, that's why the consistency of the training is so important. Whether a a, a tablet delivers it or it's a video or whatnot. Our customers have to know that the people they put on the job, out on the tarmac, wherever, are going to be compliant and current uh, because it is life or death when you're talking right. about an airplane full of people or an airplane full of, of, of product going uh, to save wherever, wherever it's going to be headed. Exactly. In fact, there have been a few incidents in the news where, uh, you know, the actions or inactions of someone on, on a ramp mm-hmm. have caused mm-hmm. Um, you know, horrific consequences. So, yes. you know, it's yes. not just um, routine. <laughs> None of this no. is routine. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and what has happened, compliance, complacency has, has started to invade the compliance, uh, the COVID-19, for example, mm-hmm. um, that it's here to stay and people are getting compliant, uh, getting, getting complacent, excuse me, uh, mm-hmm. much like in Washington, D.C. on 9-11. I lived there at the time that happened and people were hypervigilant for a couple of years. And now, to got to be honest, people are very, eh, you know, the anniversary comes around and, and then there's a little more focus. But you get lazy, you get sloppy and, and, and bad things can happen. Same things happening with COVID-19. Um, and it, 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 it does not have to be that way with the e-learning. People can get the, ma- the latest and, and most important updates from their company for compliance and, and keep healthy and, and be training without infecting their fellow students on either side. So, Right. Smart. Smart. Mm-hmm. So um, any advice for people? What's the biggest mistake they make with their LMS or with their lack of LMS when they should have? Uh, I was just going to say their biggest mistake is not to have one. That, okay. that is their biggest lack. Uh, the biggest error is not to have one. And, and when they erroneously rely on spreadsheets, uh, mm. spreadsheets are cheap, they're free, but they are not accurate. They are not in real time. And our LMS allows anyone, anywhere, any time zone to look and see what person or, or group of persons have been qualified and trained and qualified in per, you know certain job applications, job descriptions, government standards, uh, industry standards, and and the lack of that ability in real time when people are in crunches of uh, staffing, for example, and and compliant. How do you know? How do you know? And and the time saving as well as knowing that the individual is in fact qualified to be there. Uh, it affects the company's bottom line. If they can't put a person on the case because they're not qualified or their their, their certification is expired, they lose money. Mm. So the LMS um, saves them time and money, uh, bottom line. Uh, so right. the biggest mistake is not having it. <laughs> and and the other one is, is, is realizing that and I've, I've been a victim of this as well in a large uh, university system, a company makes a purchase of a system that dictates how they have to process as opposed to working with their current processes. And I'm happy to say that mode of learning adapts to your organization's processes. It does not lead 
the parade. It, it adapts to your organization's processes. And, and it's so frustrating to spend tons of money on a system that dictates to you how you have to change the way you do business. An LMS, a good LMS should not do that. And mode of learning adapts to your processes and, and lets you dictate how we set it up. Right, exactly. And when we do business coaching with folks, a lot of times they are doing things the way that their software, you know, whether that's QuickBooks or whether that's the right. ERM or whatever, um, tells them they should do things. That was designed mm-hmm. for a much bigger company or a much mm-hmm. different company mm-hmm. than they are. Right. So I think it's great that you guys don't force people into um, no, doing things no. your way. So All, and 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 an element, you know, how we, they say, um, kill kill a fly with a hammer instead of a yeah. fly swatter. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. So our LMS can be as big or as little as you need it to be. So we're not we're not um, over we're not overpowering you. And and most important, um, the customer's needs are driving it, not the other way around. Smart, smart. Yeah. Okay. So um, I know you've been with with Motive LMS for just a little while, mm-hmm. but um, mm-hmm. you know what is your best or favorite method of um, finding or attracting new customers? There are there are two favorites of mine, and I would have to say the first is um, I have a satisfied customer's testimonial, uh, mm-hmm. a happy a happy camper <laughs> mm-hmm. to capture their testimonial. Um, knowing again historically, some government agencies are not allowed to to make a, a, a reference or a testimonial to the service they receive or the products that they're happy with. But I think that's a number one. Um, that's golden. Uh, you've got a happy yeah. client and, and that client then can be upsold to other products as your company creates them uh, and new features, for example. Um, so that testimonial of your current existing happy customer, I, I think, cannot be under uh, underestimated. And, and on a close, in kind of a close uh, second, would be offering a potentially new customer um, uh, a sampling, a sampling, uh, a demo of, of the LMS or, a, or a three minutes or five minutes of, an, of a half an hour class, for example, uh, giving them a little taste test. Um, that's, that's been a popular uh, method of mine to let people know if, if they can't send a person, at least they can get a little snippet, uh, see what the quality is, the, the media rich quality, the, the, um, it's not you know, stick drawings, but uh, why they should invest further uh, give them a little taste test of the of the online course. Certainly a demo um, uh, to to let them see what it is that they're missing out on that their customers need, their own customers need, and their competition may already have. Right. Um, one of the things that I love about um, Motive LMS that I've I've seen is that some of your courses are actually kind of funny. You know, they're well they produced, <laughs> and you know, we used to mention stick figures, and I just thought, well, some of them are cartoons. <laughs> Well, and, and, and you know, that's that, right that's, it is uh, it, tapping into our inner child. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I had a wonderful professor who years ago uh, said the, the mind will all remember what the ass can bear. And and if you, <laughs> you may want to edit that, I don't know. But um, I know. No, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so it better be fun and it better be interactive. And, and if for order to sink in, it needs to be fun and engaging. Um, death by PowerPoint is not the way to oh. do it anymore. When you're an undergraduate or a high school student, um, they thought that that was the, the way adults learn. No, it is not. It is not mm-hmm. the way adults learn. And you better smile and have a good time or you're going to hate every minute of it and you're not going to complete it or you're not going to remember it. Mm-hmm. And and all the time and the money invested is blown. So yes, our, our products and, and the, the videos and things, they're fun and they're engaging and they appeal to lots of different ethnic groups groups and, and cartoons and, and serious things. Uh, it's a real mix in order to keep it lively and, and make it so that the learner learns and wants more. Right, wants more. exactly. Well, I'm not exactly a spring chicken, but I grew up with Sesame Street, you know, and the whole <laughs> fun learning little snippets of little bits of information, you know, so I was sold every little piece of information. Of that is stuck in my head still, you know, the preamble of the constitution, yes. I sing it, I can't yes. say it without singing it. So isn't that true? Uh, isn't that true? And, and, and uh, I, I would wager that the people who designed those courses back then, those little TV courses, right. they were doing it with the, the adults in mind too, not just yes. the kids. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Very smart. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's turn this a little bit more, more personal and uh, okay. talk about uh, what book or movie inspired you the most? When you were mm. 
Uh, well, the fact that my undergrad was radio, TV, and film tells you that I loved movies. I loved going uh -huh. to movies, and I loved uh, being behind the scenes, in, uh, and, and I was successful in being an extra in a movie. But mm -hmm. um, as a kid, as a kid, I would have to say the, the movie that had it, the only movie that had an intermission, but we came back for it, was Gone with the Wind. Um, gone with the wind as a Yankee. Uh, I thought, wow, the South really had a hard time. And this poor woman, she's got full of tragedy in her life. Will she ever find love? Everything's going wrong. But you know, um, under underneath it all, um, I fell in love with the Civil War history period. I did reenactments. I worked for a historic home in Tennessee. Um, and, and you learn to adapt. I mean, that was Scarlett's success formula. She adapted to anything they threw at her. And uh, that's turned out to be a pretty good life lesson for me. Absolutely. <laughs> that is a great movie. And yeah, it's a, that's a, it's real a classic, you know, it's a classic. That you just get so drawn into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since you brought it up, I have to ask about your experience as an extra. That's cool. Oh, Not everybody's oh, oh. done that. <laughs> right, right. Well, that was on my bucket list. Um, actually, <laughs> another a, a widowed friend of mine, she had it on her bucket list, too. And there was a call, a cattle call in Baltimore. Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll expand on that just a little bit. Uh, my youngest son is a professional actor, and this was before he got into acting. So his mom actually got there first. Um, we... Uh, we had an opportunity, uh, a neighbor, uh, another widowed friend of mine um, had an opportunity to be in, in a movie. They were looking for 500 people of different ethnicities, heights and weights and everything to be in a movie about a presidential candidate. Um, this is before President Obama was elected and the star was Chris Rock. Uh, the name of the movie is Head of State. And we went to Baltimore and filmed. They filmed in many parts around the city of D.C. and um, bottom line is I got paid $85 before taxes. <laughs> and um, in the last minute or two of the film, you can see me on, on camera for four seconds. <laughs> wow. And I, I, 18 hours in, in a hotel lobby in, in an air, no air conditioning running because you can't, you can't have that humming, you know. In yeah. the and uh, I was shaking hands with him for 21 takes. And um all in all, by the end of the, the cutting the cutting room floor and all, my girlfriend did not appear in it, but oh. I did. <laughs> well, <laughs> she, well, I have so, to tell you, I think you're our only um, our only client who is an actual real life, honest to gosh, movie star. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Yeah, that was that was quite funny. That was quite fun. But um, you know, being in Washington D.C., there's so many films that use the real places. Um, yeah. But this was this was. Uh, the finale was done in Baltimore in a hotel, which no air conditioning because you can't have the humming of the air conditioning. Yeah. And it was 102 degrees in the city that day. Filmed it in August. And oh. everyone was wearing suits, dark, navy, dark suits, because November is election time, yeah. right? And so everyone was dressed in dark clothes, sweating profusely off camera, dabbing your face and whatnot. But uh, yeah, so that was my claim to fame. I got on film on camera and got paid for for acting before my Sunday. <laughs> That's fantastic. I bet he'll never let you, or well, you'll never nope, let him nope, forget nope, it. No, nope. And he, he's gone on to do other things too, but, but I beat him to it. <laughs> That's fantastic. So has he been in anything we should see? Uh, yes. Uh, some of the things, uh, he was in House of Cards, a couple episodes of House of Cards. Uh, he's now an equity actor, so he can speak in, in films, but there have been um, a lot of, of commercials and, and television series that was about the Civil War and um, oh, what was it? He's, the, the Discovery Channel and, and a lot of his characters he's playing um, historically. Um, uh, George Washington's assistant uh, on Crossing the Delaware. Um, mm. The the uh, oh, he played Robert um, Todd Lincoln in in um, a series that featured uh, the change, uh, you know, the the uh, Lincoln administration. So he's into history too, and and being in Washington D.C., you've got your pick. <laughs> lots of right? history. And works at Ford's Theater, too. So uh, lots of different. Um, what is his there. name? We'll have to watch the. His credits. name is Chris. Chris Stinson. Chris Stinson. And, yep. Chris. Mm -hmm. And wow. uh, unfortunately, right now, because of COVID, all the work at the Kennedy Center, all the work at the Ford's Theater, the, the um, assignments he had are, are in are dead in the water because those yeah. those facilities cannot be open tragically. Yeah. 
Right. Well, we're hoping for the best possible, soonest possible ending mm-hmm. of all that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while, I'm afraid. Yeah. yeah. So what's your favorite airplane? Oh, my favorite airplane. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got to see the 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 stealth bomber up close at um, Andrews Air Force Base in mm-hmm. 1996 during mm-hmm. a year show. But uh, my favorite, my real favorite has got to be the Enola Gay. Oh, wow. Uh, Enola Gay was on display uh, in the um, Air and Space Museum in in uh, Washington, and my father was a World War II navigator bombardier, and he flew with uh, Paul Tibbetts, um, the gentleman mm-hmm. who dropped the bomb. He was not on that trip. <laughs> my wow. dad um, flew as his navigator um, after he dropped the bomb, after they were back in the country, uh, and dad was um, finishing out his his tour of duty uh, with the Army Air Corps, and uh but dad got to see the Enola Gay up close too when he came to visit us. And um, that's been a real special, special airplane. Can't fly on it, <laughs> but it's, no. a special <laughs> it's, it's cemented my love of, of the air force and um, my um, delight in serving the veterans, the world war II veterans and Korean veterans that honor flight that comes through Washington, DC. I'm hoping to be able to do it here out of Florida when they, when they um, open back up again, because there's a, there's a group right not too far from here, the Space Coast Honor Flight Group, I could help. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. Those uh, moments just give you chills, especially they do. when you connect someone with something mm. that they've done in the past and, you know, something mm-hmm. that's so uh, much of an impact in their life. And, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the world, really. You know, the world. For sure. On- well, if, if, if that plane hadn't dropped the bomb, uh, my father was training on planes that were going to invade Japan. And um, they were estimating a million American casualties in that effort. And I probably would never have been born if that had happened. Exactly. Oh, that's right. Um, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it feels, and I'm sure even, you know, with your Civil War history and things like that, there are so many moments on which history just pivoted. And, it's you know, definitely. none of us would be here if not for some of those things that happened mm-hmm. that seems mm-hmm. probably so insignificant at the time. So. Right. Right. Very true. Very true. Right. Yeah, Great. It. Well, mm-hmm. let's um, wrap it up and, and tell people how they can get in touch with you and how they can get in touch with, with Motive LMS and oh. what their best way is to get started if they think this is something that might help them. That is a great idea. Thank you for that opportunity. Um, you can either email me at sue at motivelearning.com or contact us through LinkedIn, my LinkedIn, uh, Sue Stinson. Um, and we can arrange a couple of different things, Paula. We can uh, just have a simple conversation uh, to find out what their current training needs and challenges are. Uh, we can also arrange to have a demo of the learning system. Uh, you can actually have a free you know, trial of it. Um, we can sample uh, some of the online courses with little little snippets of, of video. Uh, but the most important thing is just to start the conversation and find out where you are and what, what troubles you're having in training folks, uh, cost effectively and, and, and efficiently tracking their training and their and their. Pr- in their completion of training, uh, we can help with all of that. Um, and so I'd look forward to the, that opportunity. They can certainly um, reach out. At, uh, at the LinkedIn has our phone number and, and, and my signature block has the phone number of the company so that we can set a, a Zoom appointment, and have a conversation just like this. Right. You know, I imagine a lot of people who have never used a, an LMS system before are, feel a little weird about talking to someone because they're not really even sure what questions to ask. So oh, sure. yeah. I, I'm sure that the, that conversation would be super low key and super friendly and super Absolutely. easy yeah. way to, to jump in and, and start learning what, uh, how this can help. Most definitely, most definitely. Because now, I mean, COVID is here to stay, sadly, and it's impacted so many businesses and so many lives. And, and our company with our learning system and our e-learning classes, are here to stay as well and can make your life easier and, and much more cost effective to, to let us do that part and tracking employees training for you um, much, much easier now. And the cost savings as opposed to sending people across the country, uh, they can do it right in their jammies <laughs> on their <laughs> cell phone <laughs> late at night if they want to. <laughs> so, there you go. Now's the time to, to invest in that because COVID is not going away anytime soon and, and, and this the productivity of your people um, is is right at the crux of it. Uh, right. If they're trained, if they're qualified, you can get them 
productive and, and impact your bottom line. Right. You know, I, I saw a quote just recently that uh, said, you know, an optimist hopes for the best, a pessimist fears the worst, and a realist or a real captain of a ship adjusts the sails. And I think it, it's definitely time to adjust the sails. And this would be a great adjustment to make if you're a, an FBO or a, uh, any kind of an organization that has to do those, those complex procedures and, and keep people trained. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Look oh. forward to talking with anyone that is curious uh, or if they're not happy with their current LMS, we'd be, be pleased to help them make that adjustment. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Susan. For Thank for, you. All right. Thanks for having me.